Veterans reach out to my firm all the time and ask for help and guidance on applying for VA disability benefits. And this is because the VA can make it seem a lot harder than it actually is. The truth is, you can do it for yourself right from your own home. Now, if you don't want to do it yourself, or if you want help and you get stuck, you can go to veteran service organizations and they will help you out for free. Those veteran service organizations like American Legion, Disabled American Veterans, also known as DAV, or Paralyzed American Veterans, or even some state and county agencies right in your own neighborhood may be able to help you at no charge to you. The most important thing is, and I cannot stress this enough, do not pay anybody to file an application on your behalf. You can do it for free. Now, before we get started, there are some things you should probably have easily accessible to you before you even open the application. The first, what are you applying for? Back pain, knee pain, as a disease that you got from exposure to burn fits, it's good to know these things. The second thing though, is your service information. Like, what dates were you on active duty? Were you in the reserves or National Guard? Were you in different branches of service? And was there a break in service between your tours? The next thing you wanna know is your banking information. Because once the VA grants compensation, they're going to want to direct deposit that money directly into your account instead of sending you a check. The last thing you want to know is who and where have you been treated for your disabilities? Is it the VA or are, they, are there private doctors out there who've also treated you for these conditions? Now, it's helpful if you have the following. If you have medical records from private physicians who treat you for the condition. Now, the VA will get those on your behalf if you submit the right forms, but it's nice to get a jump on it and submit it ahead of time. The second thing that's helpful is a nexus letter, but you do not need one to get started. I'll talk about this more in a minute. Finally, if you have medical records from your time in service or service records, you can submit those as well, but the VA has a duty to get those for you if you tell them what branch of service you are. We're in. Now, the next thing is witness statements from friends and family members who know about your disability, that can help too. Now it's important to remember that you do not have to wait for your doctor to write a nexus letter. And in fact, many doctors won't because they're busy treating patients. So don't wait for one of these nexus letters before you apply. The other thing is too, is that the VA is actually supposed to develop the nexus for you because the VA has what's called a duty to assist. If the veteran completes an application and submits the application, the VA has to do a few things. First, they have to go and get medical records from federal agencies where you've been treated. Like that might be the VA Medical Center or other hospitals that are in the federal system. Also military facilities, they have to reach out and grab those as well. They also have to find your service records from the Department of Defense. So again, as long as you tell them that you were there, that you were treated in these facilities and that you were in this branch of service, they'll pull those records in. Then what they'll have to do is they'll have to schedule you for a claim and pension exam. The claim and pension exam actually serves two purposes. First, it determines how severe the disability is. Second, it provides that all important nexus opinion so that a VA doctor or contract doctor is going to be the one who provides that nexus opinion for you. So you don't have to wait for your doctor to write one because the VA is going to do one anyway. Now, like I said, generally you don't have to get one of these nexus letters on your own. They might be a good idea if you want to appeal later on, but either way, don't wait for the favorable nexus opinion from your private doctor. Finally, if you want to help, get records from your private doctors. Now, the VA will actually request these records on your behalf if you fill out the right forms, but this can add some time to the process. Sometimes it's just easier to go through a patient portal or maybe to the physician or hospital directly and request the records yourselves. Now this only applies to non-VA doctors, your private physicians at your local medical centers and hospitals. Again, not VA facilities. The easiest way is to set up an account on the eBenefits website. And since you can manage a lot of your benefits from that site, it's a good idea just to get an account. Once you're logged in, you can follow the links for disability compensation and follow those prompts. As you follow the prompts, you'll be asked to upload some information as well, some documents, like records that you may have, that you may have gotten to help out, or an authorization form that enables the VA to get those medical records from the private physicians. Now, 
if you're not computer savvy or you're not comfortable using the computer, you can also do this on a paper form. The paper form is the 21-526EZ. That's not easy to remember, so I'm going to put it up on the screen. You can fill that form out and fax it into the VA. They'll start retrieving your medical records on your behalf and as well as your service records. The next form you want to consider is the 21-4142. That form authorizes the VA to go out and request medical records from your private hospitals. It's kind of like a HIPAA form, but that's the VA's form. Again, that's the 21-4142A. You can submit those right along with your 21-526 and upload or upload them through the eBenefits portal. And the same applies with witness statements. If you have them or any related medical records that you may have collected yourself, you can upload those or fax those in depending on which route you're taking. Now, if you have trouble using the website, you can call 1-800-827-1000 and the VA has staff trained on the eBenefits portal. So here's some big takeaways. You don't have to wait for a nexus letter from a private doctor. You don't have to collect all your medical records before you apply. And you don't have to collect your service records before you apply because the VA will do that for you if you give them enough information to find it, which is why you need to know your service information, like which branch of service were you in and when, and were there breaks in service and were you in the garden reserves. Now here's where we come in. If you've been denied service connection or your ratings are too low, give us a call or go to our website and reach out and we can help you come up with a strategy, strategy that maximizes back pay and gets you the ratings that you're entitled to. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, keep an eye on this page and we'll hopefully drop some more useful tips on the VA benefits process.